All right, so I got it so the tire and the, I mean the wheel, the rim, does not rub the control arm any longer. But another issue. For some reason, one side lowered half an inch, the passenger side lowered half an inch more than the driver's side. And I've got a great deal of negative camber. I don't know if you can tell from the video, but there's a lot of negative camber going on there. So I don't know if the, uh, this, tr this van was never wrecked, not even a fender bender, so I don't understand why I would have any problems with the control arms, upper or lower. I did not change the lower or upper control arm bushings, but I can't see how that would give me such so much negative camber. <clears throat> of course, negative camber is the wheel at the top is tilted in. Positive camber would be the wheel tilted out at the top. <clears throat> now I do know that they make upper control arms that I can replace that will they're longer control arms, so it would it would correct this issue. But being that this side is much lower, I can barely get my fingers in here. My fingers are making contact. It's a bit of a squeeze. And then you check out this side. I can get my whole hand in here. So, I'm thinking that they must have sold me some defective coil springs. It has been known to happen. But you can see, looking at uh, level with the top of the tire, there's plenty. Of, this is perfect. This side is perfect. This wouldn't give me any issues going over high speed uh, um, dips in the road, railroad tracks or anything like that. This side, on the other hand, it would rub the fender going up a steep parking parking lot uh, driveway. And I know it would because it started rubbing right here on this slight upgrade right there. So, unfortunately, my only alternative now is uh, I've already ordered some Moog upper and lower control arm bushings. I got to take this thing back apart. And I ordered a set of Moog standard height coil springs, and I'm going to be using those. I'm going to be getting rid of these. Uh, hopefully, they'll take them back because, like I said, I do believe they're defective. Uh, brothers Trucking uh, Brothers, uh, um, they're the ones that sold me these uh, these spindles and springs. So hopefully, they'll take them back because there's obviously an issue here. I mean, I can barely get my fingers in. Like I said, on the other side, I can get my whole palm in there. This side is half an inch lower. And that should not be that way. It should be equal height on both sides, especially considering I'm using new upper and lower ball joints from Moog. Yeah, this should not be an issue. So, like I said, I already ordered the, the factory height coil springs, so I'm just gonna be st stuck with the two and a half inch drop and from my experience, two and a half drop is plenty. So I'm going to be doing that. I mean, that's a little, it, to me, it looks a little too far tucked up under. And to me, this side looks pretty much perfect. I will be uh, a, about an inch taller on this side. So I did have to cut both control arms right here. The drip rail, I removed half an inch, I mean about uh, two and a half inches on both sides, front and back. On this side, I didn't bother trimming the uh, tie rod. 
it is very close, but it, it doesn't rub. So I'm just going to have to take it back for a wheel balance and have them put the weights where it's not going to rub. Maybe you can see the negative camera from here better. I mean, it's, it's not actually a lot of negative camera. I mean, it, to me it is, I mean, because I can see it. If you can see it with your eye, that's quite a bit. And what that'll do is that'll wear out the inside tread on the tire. And I can probably get it aligned and that would probably correct it. But still, the variance from, from the driver's side to the passenger side, one inch, I mean, half an inch, is, is it's too much. And the fact that the tire rubbed the fender well right there, that's not good either. Yeah, I think the driver's side is, did what it was supposed to do, advertised to do, dropped it one inch. So I've got three and a half inches on the driver's side. And on the passenger side, I've got about four inches of drop. Or right at, four, actually about a sixteenth more than four inches of drop on the passenger side. I mean, it should be three and a half. So, yeah, I would go with with these with these spindles. Like I said the, the, earlier, these are the offset spindles. If you go with the regular spindles, it's going to shove your tire out even further, about three quarters of an inch, which is definitely way too much if you want to uh, keep your tires in good shape and not wear them out and have to change them probably every three four months so and that's the gist of it so if I was you learn from from uh, this just go with the spindles you know the spindles are gonna you know they, they wouldn't affect the, the, the camber at all because you're just repositioning the spindle height. You're not interfering with the suspension at all, other than just assembling it and putting it back together. But it's just, you know, it's, that's what I would do. Just get two and a half inch offset spindles for your van. Uh, and if your van has never been touched like this one, this is 40, 43 years old, going on 44 years old. So the coil springs, you, you should probably replace the coil springs with new, new stock height. Again, these are only one inch drop springs and I'm having this kind of issues. So don't go with the one inch drop springs. And if you don't want to cut your control arms, which like I said, isn't, you know, to me it's no big deal. If you don't want to cut the control arms, go with a, a narrower wheel. These are 15 by eight all the way around. If you went with a 15 by seven, you should not have to cut your lower control arms. So again, just go two and a half inch offset spindles on these G vans. That's my recommendation. And two and a half inches is quite a bit of a drop. I mean, you you can see this is like I said, this is about uh, well three and a half inches on this side and about four inches on the other side. But this is pretty close to being perfect. I love the look, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna deal with it. Yeah. You don't even have to change, uh, lower the rear if you didn't want to. But lowering the rear is super easy on these G-Vans. Much, 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 much more easy than doing it on a C10 pickup. As you can see, right here, the leaf spring goes into this box. Leaf spring bolt right there. If you were to drill another hole higher up, sorry about the angle, but you can see what I mean. You drill a hole here, you got the hole here, drill another hole here, all the way through, and then lift the spring up and put the hole back through and you just dropped your van 
it doesn't cost a penny to do this unless you have to go out and buy the drill bit. But that's all the cost would be. Very simple, very easy. You'd want to keep it, you know, above this plate, or you could even notch this plate, cut out a section for this to cradle in. You can go even higher. But you don't have to do an axle flip. You don't have to spend the money on the parts for an axle flip. You don't have to notch the frame. You don't have to buy, buy any of that stuff. Just a drill bit. You are kind of limited by the opposite side over here. But you can get, I'm guessing, at least four inches of drop just by drilling a hole in that box and lifting your leaf spring up. Anyway, I gotta get back to work. I gotta take off the paint from this door uh, for now because we're going into winter. I'm just gonna re repaint this whole door the same color. And then uh, probably tackle uh, the roof, too. I'm going to do the roof, too. It's kind of weird how this paint got chipped up up here. But there's, but there's no rust other than this really light surface rust, which is awesome. I hate rust. Which is why I paid so much for this thing. No rust and a very, very, very nice body. Nice, nice and straight. But anyway, um, if you liked the video, if you learned anything, if you want to see more stuff going on with these vans, remember to like and subscribe. And I'd be much appreciated. Thanks again for looking. Any questions, comments, please post them below. And I'll try and respond to every one of them.